All right, Lehi, I am back with a video on how to nest parts for laser cutting. This is very important. So, you know, there is a quick version of this where you just do all your parts on a single sketch and then you can export that sketch. That's fine, but in this particular instance, I have a mechanism that I want to move and I need to be able to see stuff in three dimensional space. Um, it's just really, really difficult uh, to do that on a single sketch. Um, but there's amazing nesting tools inside Fusion that will allow us to take our parts and uh, create a uniform nesting structure for them. So um, step one here is I've drawn my part, uh, or several parts actually, um, and I will just do a quick rotate and you can see that there is thickness. Um, Fusion's sometimes a little too smart for its own good, so if you extrude things at different thicknesses, it's going to think that they're made out of different materials, and so it's going to nest them differently. Um, in this case, I want to cut all of this out of 8th inch MDF, so I have given these all the same thickness. They are all a single thickness, uh, 1 8 inch extrusion of MDF. Um, so, so I've done that part already. Um, again, if I had like, extruded the base plate to a quarter inch, it would have it would want to nest that on its own sheet of material because it's thicker um, instead of nesting them all together. So that's the one caveat with this process. All right, um, so I've got my parts drawn. If you look, these are individual bodies. There's the back base plate. There's the little uh, rotation body. There's the linkage arm. Uh, there's this guy here, right? So uh, one, two, three, four parts. Um, for this to work, these have to be components. And so what we're gonna do with this is we're gonna very simply, you know, if you didn't draw them as components to start, which, you know, probably best practice with Fusion, but it's not one that I necessarily follow all the time, it is possible to make components afterwards. So I'm gonna to go to each individual body, I'm gonna right click on top, and I'm gonna say, um, create components from bodies. And imagine that, it's created this component one, and actually, to be smart, I'm going to just double click on that uh, and I'm going to rename it as base plate just so this thing, when it shows up, I'll know what it is. I'm going to repeat that process for each of these, create components from groups. Um, this is my rotary plate. Uh, all right, same deal here create components from bodies. We'll leave this linkage arm. And one more time, slider. If they are not components, Fusion does not see them when it does the nesting part. Um, so that's why we have to do this part. Okay, so I now have my four components. I can turn them on and off depending on what I wanna do, but they are all where they are. Um, okay, the second thing I wanna do, which just makes the next step easier, is to apply materials to these objects that are not steel. Does this work with steel? Yes, it does, it works fine. Um, we're not actually creating a laser cut file using the machining component with Infusion. We're just creating the 2D DXF from this, but um, giving it material helps the next process. You can create a sheet appropriately sized for what you need, um, and you're not stuck with the stock sizes that are inside Fusion. So uh, I don't think that we've done this in class, but I'm gonna go to each of these objects. I'm gonna click on that. I'm gonna click physical material. So I just right clicked where it said base. I'm gonna click physical material. Um, and I'm gonna go down to the wood folder and open that up and scroll down. And I'm actually gonna make these things MDF because that's what I'm cutting out of. So MDF, I'm gonna drag and drop MDF onto the base plate. I'm gonna drag and drop MDF onto the rotary plate. I'm gonna drag and drop MDF onto the linkage arm, and I'm gonna drag and drop MDF onto the slider. Now, you could be crazy, and this is like, this gives you a sense of the power of fusion. If you were creating an assembly and you knew the base plate was aluminum and uh, the, the rotary plate was mahogany and the linkage plate was a different material, you could apply different materials to each of these things and then when you go to do the layout 
uh, the nesting layout, it would give you a sheet for each material um, and then you know optimize the, the cutting for each of those. So uh, because I want to cut these all out of the same material, I'm going to make them all the same, um, but that isn't quite necessary. So these all now have a physical material of MDF applied, um, and so now I can move on to the next step. So I'm going to do a quick save here um, just to make sure we've got it. And now we're going to move out of the design tab. So I'm going to click from design, and I'm going to click to manufacture. And that brings me over to the manufacturing tab. Um, I don't think you need to download the manufacturing extension as an extension anymore, but if for some reason your screen looks different than mine, click on extensions and click manufacturing. Um, but I think most of these features are built in already. All right. So before I get too crazy, I'm going to click Process Material Library. And when I do that, uh, look at this, I have this packaging. It's already here, MDF. It's the only thing that it sees inside of um, Fusion. So it brings this up for me ahead of time. Uh, it's given me the thickness because I extruded it to you know, 1, uh, 0.125 inches, which is 3.175 millimeters. Um, you know, it categorizes this for me. It's even telling me the density of this, which is super helpful. Um, I can click packaging and I can adjust the packaging of the MDF. Um, uh, this is built off of my laser cutter size, uh, the sheets that I have. So I have 32 inch, so I'm going to type in 32 inches and that's going to convert it to 812 millimeters and I can type in 20 inches and that's going to convert it to 508 millimeters. So now I know that I'm dealing with a real size sheet um, of my material and I can click OK here. So we have this and we're good to go. Um, now what I'm going to do is we're going to click Create Nest Study. I know that seems a super fancy thing. Um, and it pops up this little dialog box on your right. Um, you can add comments in here. This is really all about the manufacturing side of things. Don't need to worry about that. Um, I'm going to click to the next tab in this, and this is going to show me all of the shapes that I'm going to link to this. Um, and you can see that this is this is helpful, right? Because it's using my slider, it's using my rotary plate, it's using my base plate, and it's using my linkage arm. So it's grabbed all four of those. If for some reason it's like, oh yeah, you know, I don't want the base plate, I can unselect this and I won't nest it. But I do in fact want it to be nested. So do that. Come over to packaging. And because I only have one packaging material available, um, that's going to automatically grab that. So it's going to give me my size material. Uh, global parameters. Um, you can deal with this. Actually, I'm going to cancel out of here and just show you if I go in here. Oh, no, cancel. If I go in here and I go to the packaging, um, under my nesting settings, so this is where I can change the, the size of stuff. I can also put a cost in here. It will tell you how much, you know, what your material, how much your parts cost. Um, but under nesting, uh, I've done this. You'll If you start, you'll see this is zeroed out for you. I just don't want my parts right up against the edge of my material. So I've said I want you to leave a two millimeter gap um, between the left and the right and the top and the bottom. You can change these all separately and I've enabled that. So now when it nests my parts, it'll leave a little bit of a border around the edge of my material. Um, and that just makes sure that I'm not like laser cutting into the to the guide, guide ruler in the laser cutter. So um, I just wanted to show you that that is a feature that you can get to. And that all you have to do is click on packaging uh, and then click on nesting and that will get you to that screen. Um, all right, so now I'm going to go ahead and create a nest study. Uh, we've already showed you this. Select all the files I want nested. One, two, three, four. Tell me there's four shapes. The packaging that's selected is that sheet of material. We're good to go. Uh, global parameters. I'm not going to worry too much about this. Corner position, I could change to the upper left, which is like our zero, zero for the laser cutter. So generally, I want to stick there. 
Um, this remnant optimization, this is a really nice feature. I can say like, uh, I wanna minimize length, meaning it will try to nest everything on the left-hand side, or I can minimize width, which means it'll like nest everything either the top and bottom, or I can do, you know, minimize the length and the width. So it's kind of up to you how you wanna do this stuff. Um, I like this minimize length, so it's gonna try to nest everything on the left-hand side as much as possible, and click uh, next over. Create manufacturing model, super terrific, include stock and click OK. Um, give this a few seconds and lo and behold, uh, here's my sheet of material, there's my full sheet of material and it's nested these parts with those borders, right? It's got that two millimeter border between uh, left and right edge and the left and right edge of my material. Uh, here's, this is saying like, oh, you're only using this much of your material so you get a sense of what that looks like, super terrific. This now, everybody, if I open this up, um, uh, I think, yep, I right click here on top of the sheet one and I click export and I'm gonna export it as a DXF file. And that's the DXF I can bring into Ruby. So I just simply save this and that will be what I bring into Ruby. Um, so there we go. Uh, it does pop up a couple of things uh, you can custom configure stuff, um, but I don't need to custom configure things, so I'm just gonna click OK, and it will save that file for me. So there you have it, that's nesting inside Fusion, um, and this works really well with this mechanism project that we're working on. Uh, I certainly hope that was helpful, and tune in later for more exciting videos.